You know the old saying, how do you get to Carnegie Hall, or Carnegie Hall, as we say around here? Practice, practice, practice. Well, you could say pretty much the same thing about success in mathematics. It turns out there's no math gene. Those who apply themselves and stick with it can succeed. Now a Philadelphia entrepreneur has come up with a way to make it, if not easier, at least a lot more fun. The online program is called First in Math, and it's rolling out across the country and schools here in our region as well. Bob Sun is chairman, president, and CEO of SunTex International, and Monica Patel is implementation strategist. And welcome, good to see both of you. Nice to be here. Thank you for having us. All right. So, so w what is it? Th 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 wh wh what's the secret? What what is it th that really sets First in Math apart? Well, we get kids to practice. I don't know of any skill that you can be, be good at without practice, maybe except for breathing, even learning to walk. I mean, an average toddler will take 3,000 steps a day. So why should math be this outlier that we expect kids to get good at math without practice? It can't be done. Okay, but then you get into the old drill and kill idea, right? Okay, let me talk about that. The reason kids haven't practiced, and, you know, they practice sports, they practice music. The reason they don't practice math is they lack the immediate feedback that our physical senses give us in the realm of sports and music learning to ride a bike, you lose balance, you don't have to rely on someone else to tell you, you're going to know. When you shift into the mental realm, our physical senses are useless. So it's essentially asking these kids to do it with the blindfold on. Now imagine if you asked a child to practice shooting foul shots, and when he's ready to go, you take away his feedback loop. You put blindfold, put earplugs in him, shoots the ball, but he can't see where the ball goes. Now that child's not going to stand there and do that activity for any length of time, because the minute you take away the immediate feedback, there's no opportunity for learning quickly becomes a meaningless activity. Okay, so how do you solve that problem? Using Here's technology? where, now normally we would have to rely on another live body, teacher, parent, sibling, but live bodies are very expensive. Here's where technology can play a paradigm shift. We have servers that are there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year round, accessible from home, school. We present a broad range of very fascinating challenges for kids in math and as they do it they get immediate feedback are they on track and they off track we give them hints that's the key the minute you give them the feedback they love to practice really so yes. it makes that much difference in terms of the way yes. they embrace it on our site last year last season just in one season kids solved over four billion that's with a b mathematics problems correctly on the site unbelievable yeah. Monica, you've been rolling it out helping to roll it out here in our region what kind of success have you been having so far how widely distributed is it here well, the entire Pittsburgh public school community uses it, all the schools too. But last year, we started to get into schools to focus on a turnaround effort. We were able to identify what really holds back kids. It's just two things, and this is common sense anywhere. No foundation, no structure. Mm -hmm. What holds them back is you don't have a foundation, you're anxious. You're anxious, you shut down, you shut down, you don't like the subject. So when I first walked in, I was greeted with, we hate math. Hmm. The turnaround as it ends is, uh, let's use the example of a school, Arlington, which is a K-8 school, among other schools we worked with. Uh, we have a friendly competition component, the rankings, where students earn these electronic stickers, they accrue, and these schools compete with each other. It's, it's a friendly competition, nothing else attached except the honor of being a top school in the district. Arlington was one of the schools that was always at the bottom. And we went in there, and their dynamic coach, Christy Applebaum, the two of us, we all worked. Kids who were counting on their fingers, we left them savvy with integers. This school ended up being the number one school in Pittsburgh. Just yesterday, we got their PSSA test results. All three grades where the kids had gone gangbusters, over 20 to 25 percentage point increase in their math proficiency scores. Wow, that's right. You've seen that kind of performance uh, everywhere this thing we, we have seen it. We've had schools that have had dramatic, dramatic increases. And that just shows that, you know, learning math is two parts. There's the teaching part, which is the responsibility of schools, but there's the practice part, 
which is the load that kids have to carry. And when kids don't practice math, they transfer that load back to schools, and that's why schools have such a hard time. The minute you get kids to carry their own load, it releases a tremendous amount of energy within the school. Now we know they've got plenty of energy, that's for sure. We should mention, for folks who've never seen First in Math, that I was amazed at how many people in our own production crew have encountered your 24 game. This is how you got your this start, This is how right? I started 24 years ago, in fact. And uh, we, you know, we learned a lot of things about how the kids to take ownership, what are the stumbling blocks they face, and then we introduced first to math about 10 years ago. And, and this is really what making the uh, doing operations with these numbers. Very to get to 24, simple that concept. Was the concept. Very right? simple concept. I was able to go half the way there. In other words, I gave you the answer right away. Answer is always 24, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> okay. However, how to get to 24? There still wasn't a feedback mechanism, so we did tournaments which drew kids in, and the kids supplied each other feedback. When technology came along, I could go all the way. And now it's, it's sort of unlimited in its potential. Yeah. So how widely deployed is this now? How many districts? Well, are we'll probably have about a million and a half kids involved, about uh, 80,000 classrooms throughout the United States. We are starting to roll into India and, and, and overseas, but its primarily focus is here. Well, tremendous, and, and a huge issue for, for certainly this country and our competitiveness going forward. Got to get more people in right, the math. Right, extremely important. You know, it's a universal language. It's something that once they build a solid foundation, they really can go anywhere. Yeah. Well, if, if people want to find out more about it or if, they've got, if they want to make sure their own school district is into it, where can they get more information? Just Google First in Math, you know, and uh, you'll see lots of information. You'll see our site. Uh, you can read about it, case studies that we've had. You can sample the games. Well, congratulations. Thanks for sharing it Thank with you. us today. Bob Sun, Monica Patel from uh, First in Math. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. When we return, a school district in Pittsburgh South Hills turns to technology to make a real estate pitch. Stay with us.